Hello folks, welcome back to the Urban Rider Studio where we have a host of heated gloves to warm your digits on those winter rides. And I definitely have myself moved on to my heated gloves for winter. It'll be a fair while before I put my summer gloves back on, I would estimate. But we've got loads of different designs. So we've actually had a few new ones, in fact, from Racer, which will have their own dedicated reviews. We've got some from Merlin, which we've had for a little while. We've got some new ones from Revit, the Revit Liberty here. All of these will have their own dedicated reviews if you want the nitty gritty and the specific details on each glove. But we thought we'd give you an overview of the entire range so you can be better informed when you're trying to make a decision as to which one suits your riding style best, riding conditions, how much you're riding in the winter. So let's break down some of the foundations here. One of the first things to consider is of course your budget. So the gloves you can see go up in price range as we move along the table, starting with the Merlin Finchley, which is just shy of 180 pounds. The Merlin Minworth and Longdon come in just shy of 200 pounds at the time of making this video. The Racer Connectic 5 is just shy of 220 pounds. The Revit Liberty is 250 pounds. And the Racer Heat 5 is 260 pounds. You may well wonder then, are they worth their money? Do you get more the more you pay? And the answer is yes, you do get slightly more features as you go up this range. But you may well find you don't ride that much in the winter and you just need some heated gloves. You don't mind so much about the extra features or you may ride lots in the winter. You may do long distances, which is when you might start looking at the gloves to my right. So what features are universal across all of these gloves? Well, first and foremost, they all have insulation. They all work as a general purpose winter glove in their own right. Obviously that insulation changes in terms of its thickness or the materials used depending on the glove that you choose, but they are all insulated to a greater and lesser extent. They are also all waterproof. Each one has something on your finger for the use of a touchscreen if you need to use your phone on the go. And they all have heating to the back of your hand, the area that is most exposed to those cold elements that goes all the way down your fingers. USPs then, why might you want to consider the Merlin Finchley? Well, firstly, as I've already mentioned, it is the most affordable at just shy of 180 pounds. Secondly, it is a short winter glove and the rest of these have quite a long cuff on them. So if you do want a shorter glove, maybe you're riding through a city, maybe you're doing more commuting and shorter trips and you prioritize comfort above all else. Well, this has less armor in it than you'll find in some of these other gloves, so it's less restrictive. And having a shorter cuff, it is gonna be easier to fit against your sleeve. It also has the least amount of padding. It is still insulated, but if you want a little bit more feel at the bars, then maybe you'll want to go that route. Next, we have the Minworth and the Longdon. In terms of the Merlin range, these are obviously slightly longer than the Finchley, slightly thicker, of which the thickest is the Longdon, and they have a bigger battery. It's twice the size, in fact, of the Finchley. The Finchley has 1,100 milliamp hours. The Minworth and the Longdon have 2,200 milliamp hours. If you're a fan of leather gloves, then the Minworth is the only one up here that is full leather. It's also available in multiple colors. The biggest notable difference between the Minworth and the Longdon is, of course, the Longdon on has slightly thicker insulation and you have a little bit more reinforcement d30 across this one notably you've got a little bit across your wrist as well you have still got armor in the minworth just fractionally less next on the list then if you're doing slightly longer trips you may want to consider the three gloves to my right first of which of course being the racer connectic 5 the usp for this glove and in fact the heat 5 is the fact that they are bluetooth synced and they have a control on your right hand only which links with the left glove, so you can control your temperature across both gloves using one hand. Now, if you want more substantial armor, you will want to look at the Heat 5, but if you're a rider who doesn't like to have big bulky armor around your hand and prioritizes dexterity and flexibility, then maybe the Connectic 5 is the glove for you. You have some soft reinforcement there, but nothing restrictive at all. In terms of its battery, again, it has a 2,200 milliamp hour size of battery, the same as the Merlin Minworth and Longdon. The difference though, if you're doing a really long trip and you know that battery isn't going to last for the entirety of it, 
is that Racer have an accessory so that you can hardwire your gloves to your bike's battery, and therefore as long as the bike is on, it will be heating your hands. As I say, the Heat 5 work very similarly, they just have slightly more armor, hence the higher price tag. Then of course we have another textile glove, the Revit Liberty at £250. These have a similar amount of armor. You've got their TPU armor on your scaphoid protection and your knuckles. You have their Thermotronic heating system. You actually have four different heat settings on these gloves, so you can be a little bit more precise about the temperature that you want. And whilst all these gloves are insulated, this probably has the most comprehensive layering system to the insulation on the inside. And then probably my favorite aspect is the quality of the battery, which is also, for your reference, about twice the size of the batteries in the Racer gloves or the Merlin. The other thing I love specifically though about the Revit battery is the fact that it uses a micro USB slot to charge it, which is a cable you're more likely to have on you or be able to find as you're out and about. For the Racer or the Merlin, you need the specific cable that comes in the box. The other thing is it's got lights on the side here, so you can press that and it will tell you how much battery life it's got, there is no guessing involved. I should also mention though that the Racer gloves also have a battery indicator. It's color coded with the lights on the switch itself. Now when it comes to battery life, each company will have different claims as to how long their battery will last. But something they will all tell you is it is dependent on your riding conditions, the temperature of the battery itself, the age of the battery and the care you've taken to store it through the summer when you're not using it, and of course, which heat setting you're actually gonna put the gloves on. The thing that I can say for sure though is that the bigger battery will give you the best battery life. For reference though, even the smallest battery on this table for the Finchley has a claimed battery life of around two to three hours on the middle setting. And even that will be a comfortable amount of time for most commuters out there. But obviously, if you're doing a longer trip, you will want to go for either the Racer, which you can hardwire, or the Revit with its larger battery capacity. Hopefully then that helps you make a decision on which glove might suit you best. I will drop links to all of their dedicated reviews in the description where you can find out more details on each of these gloves. You can also check the size guide on our website if you follow the links there as well. Drop your questions and comments in the section down below and I will see you soon for more of the world's finest riding gear. Bye-bye.